All right, I think we're ready to go whenever you are. Okay, great, thank you. Um, good, e good evening. Um, welcome to the Library Commission's September 19th, 2022 meeting. Um, this is a teleconference meeting with Library Commission members, city staff, and members of the public participating remotely to ensure proper social distancing in this federal, state, and local emergency. Um, I'd, I'd, perhaps we'd like to do roll call. I'd, I'd like to introduce the staff and Library Commission members present. Myself, my name's Alan Cohen. I'm the chair. David Earhart, are you here? Here. Great. Commissioner Katie Hadrovic? Here. Uh, Kristen Leap, Commissioner? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. From the depths of I don't know where. Um, and uh, and um, I believe um, absent uh, today is, is Vamsi Valakabuda Kabuti. Not here, correct? Correct. And also Vice Chair Pavneet Singh is also not here tonight. Is that correct? Also correct, yes. Okay, good. And would you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, happy to do so. My name is Ashley Walker. I'm a management analyst for the library and um, community services department. Terrific. Welcome. Thank and you. and um, I think staff present includes Sean Reinhardt, Director of Library and Community Services, and, and Ashley Walker, as she just introduced herself, Management Analyst. Um, Ashley, would you please provide instructions to the Library Commission and members of the public on how this meeting will proceed, please? Members of the commission should keep their cameras on and their microphones off until they're recognized by the chair. Commissioners should raise their hand to indicate that they wish to speak. If a member of the public wishes to speak during a public comment period, please notify the staff liaison by using the raise hand feature at the bottom of your screen. If you're dialing in, you can use star nine to engage the raised hand function. Public comment will be heard in the order received and is limited to three minutes in length. When your turn for public comment has arrived, staff will unmute. Terrific. Th thank you, Ashley. Um, regarding public comment, under public comment, the public may address the Library Commission on any subject not listed on the agenda. Each speaker may address the Library Commission once under public comment for a limit of three minutes. Please clearly state your name and address or political jurisdiction in which you live. The Library Commission cannot act on items not listed on the agenda, and therefore the Library Commission cannot respond to non-agenda issues that might be brought up under public comment other than to provide general information. Do we have any public comment for items not on the agenda this evening? If a member of the public wishes to speak during a public comment period, please notify staff by using the raised hand feature at the bottom of your screen. If you're dialing in, you can use the star nine button to engage the raised hand function. And there are no raised hands, so we can move on. Okay, very good. So we're now at section D, presentations and proclamations. Uh, presentation from the Men Menlo Park Community Campus Project update. Um, we'll begin tonight with a presentation on updates about the Menlo Park Community Campus Project. Sean, would you be kind enough to make the presentation and answer any questions afterwards? Uh, thank you, Chair Cohen. I'd be happy to. Um, so this item it are uh, updates about the Menlo Park Community Campus Project. Uh, we have a few of uh, various updates for you this evening, a uh, list of upcoming city council items, some new furnishing layouts, some information about construction tours, uh, and then a few other updates here. We'll get to those. Nice picture, a rendering of the facility. Um, some upcoming city council items for the commission's awareness. I encourage you to stay tuned to these. Um, on October 11th, the city council will authorize a request for proposals for an aquatics operator. That would be at both the Burgess pool and the MPCC pool when it opens. Um, in November or December, a date to be determined, the city council will provide direction to update a policy pre-existing policy from 1986 about naming or changing the name of facilities. This is in preparation for a process to identify the name of the new facility. Um, that process might take a few months, but we'll seek some initial direction from council in November and December. 
um, December, January, sometime in that time frame, going to city council to award the contract for the furnishings and non-fixed equipment like the books order and some other things, fitness equipment. And then January and February, looking at some preliminary options for parking management of the new site, as well as some preliminary considerations for staffing and operating the site. And these will be going to city council in January and February. And, uh, the next update is about furnishing layouts. We have some new 3D visualizations of some of the areas inside the building. Uh, this was requested by the Menlo Park Community Campus Subcommittee and Working Group, because uh, looking at the 2D layouts is not, um, not that engaging, not as evocative. So we got these 3D ones going. Um, so these are actually taken from the computer design for the, the project that the construction company and the architects were using. So here's like kind of what the line drawing looks like with the furnishings in there. This is the senior lounge. Um, there's a more fully rendered view of it here. These are some of the actual furnishings that have been selected. Um, the bookshelf, the, the pool table that's currently at the main library. Uh, this is the front entry of the facility. This is kind of that front corridor here. And again, there's the senior lounge. Turning to the children's library, here's the line drawings. Um, this, this schematic just kind of shows where this view is kind of coming from. I think we're going to look at view number two here in a minute, looking toward the front the entry into the children's library, which is like right across the hall from the front door of the whole facility. And it looks like that uh, with furniture and colors and everything. This is like looking toward the door coming into the library and the librarian here. And there's another door on the other side that leads out to a really lovely outdoor children's terrace. Uh, but again, you can kind of see the light fixtures and the rooms of both shelving, um, some of the colors and textures that are being used in the furnishings. And then the third one that is fully rendered out is the makerspace. And as you know, that's on the second floor off of the all ages library. Uh, a couple of different views here. This is an indoor outdoor space as well with a makerspace inside and a terrace outside. I'll just go to the full color view here. You can see the actual furnishings, industrial, but clean and modern, kind of fun colors in here. Beautiful view out to this terrace that's connected to this space. And that's looking out toward Kelly Park. And yes, there are mature redwood trees right there. So that's accurate to what the view is going to be like. A wonderful space here, the maker space. And then we have these dollhouse views that again show the furnishings as they would be laid out. And these are the actual furnishings shown to scale. So this is the first floor of the building. Here's that front entrance that we've all seen in the renderings. That hallway we just looked at with the senior lounge right here. That continues into this main dining hall. That This is showing it in dining configuration. I think the seat's about 120 or so that way. It seats about 220 audience style. It's dividable here. There's a wall that kind of folds out here. Uh, there's two kitchens in this space, a full commercial kitchen that's mainly for staff use for the senior lunches, and then like a prep kitchen that would be used like for rentals or for special events. Um, outdoor terrace here. Uh, another outdoor terrace out here. Then kind of going back to the front of the building, you go through the hallway, through this set of doors, and that's the children's library that we just saw the rendering of. And then beyond that is a little children's outdoor terrace. What's not shown here is there's actually a little wall here that kind of defines the space outdoors. So it's not quite as exposed to the rest of the outdoors. Um, Kelly Park and Field is over in this area. And then um, the youth center, which is the after school and summer camp program is here. What's not shown in this layout is the gymnasium. It's, it's in this vicinity here. It's just not shown because there's no furniture really in it to speak of. Um, the stairway, when you come in the, room, uh, come in the building and turn left, there's a main stairwell here. And that's what we're going to see just to kind of orient ourselves. So that stair comes out up here onto the second floor. And then you're in another corridor here. And this is the, the main portion of the library, the all ages portion. Um, it includes an enclosed teen room over here, a little study and tutoring room here, enclosed, another conference room here, enclosed. Uh, but the rest is kind of all open library space. Um, you would go through here to get into the makerspace that we just saw uh, the view of. And it has its own outdoor terrace, which is lovely, looking out again over Kelly Park and Field. Uh, going back through into this main corridor here, there's another kind of flexible classroom space here. And then 
this is a movement studio here uh, for dance and whatnot, yoga. And then in here is the fitness room, which will have actually like fitness equipment, like workout equipment, stationary bikes, and treadmills, things like that. And then um, the gymnasium, uh, this is just open to below. It's the second level of the gymnasium, which is two stories high inside. So that is a quick look at the dollhouse furnishings and building that as we speak. Um, to go and see the site, I strongly encourage library commissioners to jump on one of these construction tours that are coming up. These are hard hat tours, hard hats will be provided. You see the building while it's under construction. Uh, there's three dates coming up in October, January, and March. Um, they're already starting to enclose the building, putting the outside cladding on it and everything. So I uh, really encourage you to kind of experience the facility at these different phases. Um, these are all on Friday afternoons. And let's see another little picture here. And then the um, Library Commission did review some of these survey results preliminarily last month, the library and information ones. Uh, but, but that survey has been completed. It was recreation and community programs developed with a lot of stakeholder input. It was open for just about two months in paper and electronic formats in English and Spanish, over 900 respondents. The complete survey results were transmitted to the city council in their study session on last week. So if you haven't had a look at that, I encourage you to look at the full results. Uh, but for tonight, I did want to give a second view of the library and information resources um, question, which the commission did look at last month, but not in this format where they're kind of ranked. So what's going on here is for this question and other questions, people were asked to how important are these items? And then they were given the option of not at all important, somewhat important, very important. If they answered not at all important, you give it a point. If somewhat important, two points. Very important, three points. Then you could take the average of all the responses and you could come up with this chart that kind of ranks the relative importance on average. So you can see Wi Fi is deemed, uh, so I'm sorry, the, the center line here at two, that's kind of right in the middle, somewhat important. So uh, rankings that are sort of up to the right of this line are, are more important or more like very important and below two would be not as important. So you can see really high, first of all, everything on this list were more than somewhat important to all the respondents on average, more than two, but there's definitely a, a question of degree. So wireless internet access, quiet places to read, books in paper format, story times for young children were the top four that's bread and butter stuff for libraries. No big surprise there, but it does confirm, you know, kind of what we already knew. Um, as we go through, there's a number of different um, like resources and programs that were listed here. And some of them we are already offer, some of them we do not. So and in particular, things like uh, job skills training or food and security advice and support, healthcare navigation and support are things that we're not currently offering, but clearly we very, very high in importance to survey respondents. So we're taking a look at that, which leads us into the programming considerations that we spoke with the city council about. We're gonna be diving into specific library program um, plans over the next few months that take these considerations into account, uh, which is to prioritize those elements of the survey respondents rated with the highest importance. It kind of makes sense. We ask people what's important. Do we wanna prioritize those things that they said, yeah, those things are important. Um, there's a few programs here that I mentioned earlier. We're not currently offering, but they're rated with high importance, like homework help, uh, bringing that back, um, clearly something um, that's important to people, job skills, food and security advice, healthcare navigation. Some other um, areas of the survey that yielded some insight were um, that free or discounted fees for Menlo Park residents, something that's very important to people. Um, library programs generally don't charge fees, but it's kind of indicative of just in general, what the community is kind of hoping for and expecting um, is to prioritize residents. The deprioritize de programs that primarily attract uh, non-residents or that survey respondents rated as not that important. And then um, prioritizing casual and drop-in opportunities for children and families, as opposed to more structured kind of organized play. This is primarily around athletics and recreation, but conceptually it kind of dovetails with what the library kind of already has been doing. 
Um, and then some next steps on, this, on the survey results is to continue to use these results and stakeholder input, including the Library Commission, to develop the program planning and incorporate that feedback into the process and then pr present preliminary staffing and program options to City Council in January or February of 2023. So for the Library Commission, some of that preparatory work we're planning to do October, November, and December as far as like the library staffing and operations plan so that it'll be teed up and ready for the city council in January. Let's see if that concludes that. Um, hang on, let me get my, my Zoom screen here. That, that concludes the presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. And it looks like Commissioner Hadrovic has her hands up. Yeah, I did. I, I was uh, interested in looking at that bar graph of all the things that were um, important, somewhat important. Is that a complete list or did you not, like, was there anything that sort of universally was not important? Because it seems that there's not that big a difference between the highest importance and the lowest importance. And so I just, um, I'm just curious about that because I would say that if you're looking at I mean, if it's out of three and the lowest is getting more than two, that suggests to me that everything that was asked was important to people. Yes, I was trying to screen share while you were, were talking and I kind of uh, had a little It was there, there for a minute and then yeah, it let me see if I, can... I mean, I just, I, I looked at it. I just was curious, was there anything that you didn't include in that list or is that, is that a complete list of everything people were asked to rank well so this particular survey was recreation and community programs and it had like 18 19 questions and a, 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 most of them were either like demographic kind of requests for information or around the recreation or quality right. or so this was like the one question and yes that chart basically was all the options underneath that one question but that that I'm assuming that that maybe I'm wrong, but that chart was all the things that are most relevant to the library for us, or is it just you put everything on that chart? Uh, well, everything that would fit in in the one question, uh, right? So, but I mean, it just so happened that the things, things that we asked people about all turned out to be rated important. So. Yeah, we, we could have maybe gone out and maybe we still will to specifically the library users and drill in a little bit more. Uh, I mean, you could, you could you like could eating, say that, eating in the library is one that, yeah. you know, might not rate as right. important. Um, but it looks like maybe you nailed the things that are important, maybe based on prior surveys. But like looking at that, I don't know whether the purpose was to try to gauge where you spend more resources or less, but these results make me think everything that you asked people to weigh in on were important to people. Yeah, I mean, I think that's an accurate statement. Everything we asked them about in this category um, was, was deemed more than somewhat important on average and very important in, in some cases. So, so again, you, maybe we could have asked more questions about things that uh, maybe seem less important, like again, uh, space for people to have animated conversations or um, allow dogs in the library or right. you know some other things that we know folks some folks really don't want um, but what we do see here is that there were some there are some things that we currently do not offer we don't really offer legal advice and support we don't offer money management or financial advice and support except very sporadically you know some of these items in, the, in this sort of group group right here so we yes. did gain some good insight there. Like these are things we don't currently do, but but people are rating them more important than we thought. Uh, so at least we, we have that information. In terms of when you're when you're looking at all of this and the allocation of your resources, um, was this something that I mean, given what the results were, is are there resources to provide all of these things if you've if you've asked people about them and they come back that they're important, it seems like then that can't 
be ignored. So I'm just curious yeah. in terms of this report coming back, is this problematic for the city resources or is this this is going to be okay? We can try to we can try to provide all of these things for people. Well, and in particular, as it relates to the MPCC, I think we're anticipating that we will need additional resources to open and operate that facility. So, um, you know, we're anticipating going to the city council with a resource request for staffing and budget. And a part of that request would be um, to support things like this, where it's like, here's some programs that community members have stated are very important that we aren't currently offering but so here's a proposal to go ahead and start offering those. And so there's a couple ways to go about that. One would be to authorize new resources, new staff, new budget to do the things. Uh, another way to do it would be to look at some of the things we're currently doing that maybe are, are not as important or where we could divert resources from one thing to the new thing. Um, my sense is that uh, pr probably the, the, the first option would be more likely since it is a brand new facility that's being opened and so you know that's just additional capacity that just has to go in um, because it's not currently operating um, um, but but that's the idea here i think is to understand where are the community's priorities as we go through this process of 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 requesting additional resources to open the new building thank you i appreciate it oh, my pleasure thank you Okay, are there any additional questions? Look. Oh, hi, Pavneet. Sorry all for the delay. <clears throat> no, 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 no. No problem. Bring my little all. guys down. Uh, it's right in the strike zone. So <laughs> no, 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 no problem. Actually, let let the record uh um note that that uh Pavneet Singh has joined the meeting. Um and we're we're uh, underway, so just bear with us. Did you catch Sean's presentation just now? Yeah, I caught the the last okay, part. Back end. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Um, so right now, I was just going to ask if there were any any additional questions from within the the within the library commission, and and if not, was going to ask if there was any public comment on this uh, on this item. Do any commissioners have any questions or comments? Otherwise, we'll move on and call for public comment. Okay. If a member of the public wishes to speak during a public comment period, please notify staff by using the raise hand feature at the bottom of your screen. If you're dialing in, you can use star nine to engage the raise hand function. And at this time, it looks like there's no public comment. Okay, terrific. Thanks, Ashley. Um, so then if if okay, I'd like to move on to uh, part D2, which is department updates. Um, the commission will hear a presentation on department updates. Sean will make the presentation and answer any additional questions. Sean, you're doing the heavy lifting tonight. Thank you. <laughs> if you would please introduce it, this. It is, is my pleasure. So I just have a few updates uh, for the library commission in and around the library department. Um, recently completed the summer reading game took place between June 1st and August 31st. It was open to all ages. We had 1,000, over 1,000 participants in the summer reading game this year, which was great. And as you know, participants, they track their reading, they discover new books. They also enjoy community activities. It's kind of part of the game and they earn prizes for doing that. Um, participants receive a reading log and a free book of their choice just for signing up. And then they get another book for when they complete their reading goals at the end of the game. Um, also, this year, this is the second year we've done this, the library staff really focused on visiting the city operated summer camps and um, summer schools every week to perform story times and engage children in early literacy activities. So really kind of focusing in on kids. And that really is the purpose of the summer reading game is that many studies have shown that during the summer months, students who don't read actively read during the summer, they can lose up to a full grade of reading comprehension. It's called the summer slide in education parlance. So the summer reading game is uh, to kind of counteract that and encourage kids to read over the summer. So that's uh, one update from around the library. Also, we uh, did a second round of the Little Free Library Incentive Program. We just completed the application process. And this is the program we started in 2019 
to encourage Menlo Park residents to install little free libraries on their properties. So these are mini grants that just pay for the little free library to be installed. Um, in exchange, the property owner pledges to curate and take care of the little library and keep it in good condition. Um, so we awarded 15 new libraries this year. Uh, they'll be installed in the next month or two. Uh, that program is sponsored by Menlo Park Library Foundation. Um, I think with the 15 new libraries, uh, we installed like 27 of them in 2019, and there were already more than a dozen in place before the 2019 program. I think this puts Menlo Park's total number of little free libraries close to 50, uh, which is great. They're all over town. Uh, we're going to organize another bike ride or a couple of bike rides too to do like the little free library tour, which is something we did in 2019. It's very popular. Um, also, uh, just a couple more. One is that um, later this week, we're going to be doing uh, an event in honor of Banned Books Week. Uh, this is an annual event celebrating the freedom to read. It was launched in 1982 in response to then a surge in the number of challenges to books in schools, bookstores, and libraries. History has a way of repeating itself because that seems to be happening a fair amount um, in 2022 still. So um, this year's theme is Books Unite Us, Censorship Divides Us. Um, this is an after the library closes event and um, uh, librarians will be reading selections from frequently challenged books and then having discussions about you know, some of the efforts to, to suppress those books. So that's for Fan Books Week. And again, that's this Thursday, 6.30 after the library closes. If you have the time to stop by, I encourage you to do that to a great event. And then um, the Bellhaven Resource Fair, which was formerly known as the Bellhaven Spring Fair, is coming up. Um, it's food, entertainment, children's activities, but also learning about community serving organizations that like, serve the Bellhaven neighborhood in particular. Uh, participating organizations include the city, of course, Bellhaven Action, Job Train, Meta, the company formerly known as Facebook, and others. And that's on this upcoming Saturday from 10 to 2 on Ivy Plaza, which is outside the Bellhaven Library. Uh, definitely an event not to miss. It's a really great um, neighborhood fair, resource fair. And then finally, I'll just note for the commission, while I have the, the floor here, that there are three commission recruitments currently underway to fill vacancies, including one vacancy on the library commission. Uh, the applications are being accepted now at the city clerk's office, and the deadline is October 14th. Um, you can see there's the one vacancy that term uh, it was created when uh, Commissioner Zaslow uh, stepped down. Um, that term actually runs through 2026. So whoever the city council appoints to that seat will have a you know pretty much like a full full um, term to serve. Um, so I would if you know folks who are interested in the library or serving in their community, they just must be a Menlo Park uh, registered voter. Um, then they should uh, apply uh, through the city clerk's office. And those applications are online, the city's website. And that is my um, presentation. And I'm happy to answer any questions. That was certainly pretty straightforward. Would not surprise me if there's not a lot of questions. That's great, a lot going on. is there so let me see um i think if there's no comments from within the library commission we can request if there's any public comment on this item if a member of the public wishes to speak during a public comment period please notify staff by using the raise hand feature at the bottom of your screen if you're dialing in you can use star nine to engage the raise hand function and it looks like there is no public comment on this item all right, very good. So then if um, if you'll allow me, I think we're going to go on to regular business. So under regular business, the Library Commission considers recommendations from city staff on policy matters or administrative actions that require Library Commission approval. I think the first item is to approve the minutes from both the July 18th and August 15th meetings, and those were attached in the minutes. Those minutes were attached to this agenda, which were made publicly available to both members of the commission and the public um, prior to this meeting. Um, are there any clarifying questions from the commission before taking public comment? I'll take that as a no. Um, staff liaison, do you have any public comment on this item? 
It looks like there are no public comments on this item. Okay, terrific. Thank you, Ashley. So then why don't you go ahead? Um, so would the commission like to make a motion to approve these minutes? I'll make the motion to approve both the July and the August minutes. And would anybody be nice enough to second those? Second the uh, motion. For both? Correct. Terrific. So I believe um, then we have accepted the minutes uh, and they have been signed off on. Um, and I think we have to take a roll call. Do. <laughs> Go for it, Ashley. Okay. So there's a motion on the floor to approve the meeting minutes from the July and August Library Commission meetings. Chair Cohen? Uh, yes, I, I vote in favor of both. Erhart, Commissioner Erhart? Yes, I, I approve both. Vice Chair Singh? I approve both. Thank you. Commissioner Hadrovic, excuse me. Yes, I approve both. And Commissioner Lee. I vote to approve. The motion passes unanimously, I guess. There you go. We're very agree we're a very agreeable group. <laughs> so, easy. so I so I think we're up to section F then, informational items. So informational items are transmitted to the Library Commission in staff's effort to provide an update on matters of importance to the commission. Informational items are not action items. However, a commissioner, city staff member, or a member of the public may request to make a comment or ask a question on any of the informational items. Um do we have any um do we have any informational items to discuss tonight? The only item uh under informational items is the tentative agenda calendar, which um I'll go ahead and screen share that. Uh, I'm just gonna scroll it to the top so you can see the top of the page. This is just straight from the agenda packet. So um you can see the first column's meeting date and the Second column is proposed agenda topics, and you're here in September. This is tonight, the MPCC project updates, and you can kind of see the, the tentative agenda calendar might look like. Of course, all of this is tentative and stuff to change, but um, totally open to any suggestions, comments from the commission about the order or any items that are not on here that you'd like to add or questions about the items that are on here. Uh, Sean, would you mind scrolling down? Are there items that we have in a parking lot that we need to consider at all about potentially uh, popping them in? Like, are any of those things that you think we could we could visit in in the next couple of months or not yet? Yeah, the only thing that's in the parking lot currently, since we did kind of put some parking lot items up in here in an attempt to kind of populate the calendar. Um, are just staff presentations about current happenings at the library, and those can almost be slotted in almost any time. Um, library programming, early childhood education, adult literacy, and ESL are kind of some prompts. I'm happy to uh, bring specific programs to uh, the commission. We'd, we'd like to have a staff presentation at least once every other month, just to kind of talk in a little more detail about specific library programs. So that's that's kind of what's in the the parking lot down here right now. And also, Alan, if you don't mind, I, uh, another question I had um, was whether or not we have a presentation to city council coming up at all anytime soon that we would need to discuss drafting that presentation. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great observation. And I, I think um, here's where I'm missing our usual staff liaison, Nick Shegda, who is on vacation and he will be back next month. He would be able probably from memory to mention when was the last time the work plan, <laughs> you're talking about the commission work plan, went to the city council. But I've, I've made a note here to make sure that it's reflected on, on this calendar wherever it's supposed to go. 
Uh, I think that even if we, even if it was, David, I can't recall if you just gave a presentation or it seems like we worked on one. So I don't, I don't remember whether it occurred or not, but you know, if we, I think it would be great for our um, schedule in general, if we had a mindset about what times of the year those presentations are and just have them scheduled in so that it's not it seems to me that it's always been something that takes us a little by surprise and then we scurry to get it uh, written and then reviewed by others in the commission before our scheduled date. So maybe we start to get a sense of when it's always gonna be and we can, we can just have that as a regular portion of our calendar. I'm gonna interject to say that um, the council presentation has never been um, super regular and um, and in the past it has been pushed back month and month and month upon month um, so um, uh, it's great if we can do that but um, it's just like with the council presentation it's just important to be aware that it might not um, be possible no i totally agree with you kristen that's a great i agree completely but i do think it might be smart for us to every six months maybe sort of draft a here's where we are so far and then we can build on it so that you know it's not such an exercise for the chair and whoever else is willing to help the chair come up with okay here's what we we want to do so uh, anyway just a suggestion i have of something that we might want to put a little bit more as a recurring item is thinking about our our commission report yeah i think i think that's a great suggestion katie um we can we can flag it in in you know we can do it quarterly or half year and even if even if there's not enough content to maybe propose a presentation i i to kristen's point i i think at the very least it's just a reminder that we can drop some ideas and topics in there and then i think once there's a level of activity and urgency that warrants it we can start lobbying to do a presentation at the at the city council meeting that makes that makes complete sense. So that, that all sounds good. And with that, then maybe what we could do is um, tweak the formatting of this calendar to maybe add a section that's like recurring business. That because like kind of at the bottom of this calendar, at the commission's request, like the the board meetings of affiliate groups were placed here. So similarly, like. Hey, the stuff that happens every year or twice a year, just kind of note it there so that it's always present during the discussions of this calendar. I see like some heads nodding like that. So yeah. we'll, we'll just take that as a generally what we'll do for next time. Commissioner <laughs> Luke has her hand up. Did you? Sorry, that's from before when I interrupted. I was okay. trying to be a little bit following directions, <laughs> but partly not following directions. Uh. There you go. Good. So are there any other comments or questions from the group? Um, if not, I think we don't we open it up for public comment at this point. You can do that right now. That's great. Thanks, Ashley. No problem. If a member of the public wishes to speak during public comment period, please notify staff by using the raise hand feature at the bottom of your screen. If you're dialing in, you can use star nine. And there are no public comments. Okay, great. So I think we're we're getting towards the end. Um, I think this is the section of the meeting where we ask if any of the membership of the Library Commission have any reports um, since the last meeting. Um, this would include attending um, a variety of community meetings that are relevant, reporting back. Um, are there any updates that anyone would like to share? Uh, I, I'd be happy to just give a brief uh, report for the um, Menlo Park Library Foundation. And that is chiefly that they are planning an event at the library for uh, members of the library uh, foundation and also to thank some, some donors that have major donors that have given to the foundation. And uh, Sean, you're, you go to those meetings with me. I don't think there's anything else particularly significant for the foundation right now, other than um, 
I'll just, I've stated it before, we are always uh, looking for new board members and would love to especially maybe have a board member that's coming out of the Bellhaven community, particularly since we're building a, a library there. And um, it seems to me I had one more library foundation uh, note, but it's escaped me. So, um, so that's it. Well, Katie, I'll just weigh in and say I'm really looking forward to the um, foundation event uh, to recognize our donors at, at the library. So, uh, again, just look at that's in October, yeah. right? It's going to be taking place in October, although I think the date might be being missed. And oh, I know, I just remember the big thing is that, of course, I would encourage you all to join the foundation. If you're not already a member, just uh, it's it's a donation type thing. And also, um, if you've never gone and looked at the Menlo Park Library Foundation website, it's a really wonderful uh, website and it has good resources for the community. So that's it in terms of uh, my uh, report. And I, I just want to add one thing, which is, uh, and you may have already covered this, but <clears throat> I went to the book sale at the Menlo Park Library, I think put on by the foundation. And it was extraordinary. I got, a, oh, it's not put on by the foundation. It's it's another group. It's the, Sean, what they're called the Friends of the Menlo Park Library. Park Library. Okay, so yeah. different update, but the book sale was was amazing. And, uh, yeah. um, and so I highly recommend it if you haven't been before. Yeah, no. I, I, I went as well. Boy, it, talk about a crowd. Yeah, <laughs> um, you know what? You know what people tend to forget. I mean, you know, the, there's a book sale every day um, in the library, and there's much less of a crowd. Yeah, <laughs> so you, you've got a more decent chance of finding a new book if it makes it to the shelf. There. Yeah, I'm that's glad to see right. that donations are back up and that those activities are going. So yeah, but, that sale was really was really quite a crowd. But but Sean mentioned it earlier, and I will restate it that the foundation does uh, pay for the little free libraries. So if you're driving around town and you see all those wonderful little free libraries, uh, that's part of the foundation. Really good. A any other any other updates? Going once, going twice. So then I believe if there are no additional commissioner reports, then we are at a point in the meeting where I can call for the adjournment of the meeting. Um, so I'd like to adjourn the meeting. And what's the time, Ashley? It's 7.20. 7.20. So I, I guess we're officially adjourning this, this month's meeting. Thank you, everybody, for, um, for making it tonight. Ashley, lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you all. Thank you for joining us, Sean. Thank you for all your help. And I want to thank all the commissioners and the public for joining us this evening and um, look forward to uh, our upcoming meeting next month. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Thank Have you. a lovely night. Bye-bye now.